And we're back on STL TV Live. I'm Sarah Thompson, and I'm here with Cliff Freilich to talk more about the first annual St. Louis International Children's Film Festival. So in our first segment, we were talking about the 14 different films, the types of films, but there's also workshops and camps that really make this quite unique. Right. R undergoing uh, right now, underway right now, <laughs> are our filmmaking camps. We have actually two of them, one in live action and one in animation. They're being held at the Creative Experience at the St. Louis, uh, St. Louis Public Library at the Central Library. Really beautiful new space when they did the renovation. It was as if, as if they were thinking, oh, we might want to use that space to do filmmaking camps uh, because it seems perfectly uh, set up for that purpose. Uh, so that's taking place right now. We have 20 kids in each of the camps. Uh, we're partnering with Lindenwood and Webster Universities uh, to create short films during those five days. Uh, and I, by all reports, things are going terrifically well. The kids are very engaged. They're already uh, at work making mm -hmm. their movies. And then at the conclusion of the camp on Friday, we will have a handful of movies to show and on Saturday at the library where the films were created we're going to actually be showing those films oh, in, in okay. front of Return to Oz that's our classic film that we're I offering. I love I have to say that's I one of my again like one of my childhood ones we were talking earlier off camera I was saying Annie but I love Return to Oz when I saw that on your lineup I was like I have to go a to little that. scarier <laughs> than the Wizard of Oz yes. so be prepared if you're uh, thinking it's going to be just like the Wizard of Oz be prepared for a, a little fright but uh, it's a a film that didn't get a lot of attention when it was originally released, but has grown into this sort of classic uh -huh. that people really, really love. So the library actually has a Wizard of Oz exhibit mm -hmm. right now uh, that you can visit. It's an interactive exhibit, and we're using that as a set for the live action films. So the that's live fantastic. action films will have sort of an Oz theme. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing it in conjunction with uh, Return to Oz. And then tell me about uh, your partnership with the St. Louis Art Museum as well. We have a teen workshop in animation uh, on Saturday, and that's an all day event, about 10 to three, I believe. Uh, that does come with a cost, so you'll have to check things mm -hmm. out at slam.org. That's mm -hmm. the website that you'll want to visit in order to find out whether any space is still available. But that's with, it's very exciting for us because that's with one of our main guests. Uh, we're honoring an animator by the name of Michael Sporn. Uh, Michael has been in the business for almost 40 years now. He has been uh, Oscar nominated. He's won Emmys. He's worked for HBO. He's worked for Weston Woods, which is Scholastic Books animation arm. And he specializes in adapting classic children's tales to animation. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to be doing two programs with him. Uh, on both Friday night and also on Sunday afternoon, one at Washington U, one at the uh, library. But he's also teaching this workshop uh, along with his wife, Heidi Stallings, who's an actress. So okay. you'll learn everything start to finish about how you construct an animated film, including voice acting. So right. it's a really rare opportunity to have uh, somebody who's a true master of animation give you hands-on instruction in the art. And you were saying that at Cinema St. Louis you guys had been thinking for a long time about doing a children's film festival. I mean, what was sort of the the impetus? I mean, do you feel that kids are, younger people are more into filmmaking because technology is more accessible, cameras are more accessible, or just the interest? People are more savvy about films at a younger age. It's twofold. One, yes, I think you're absolutely right because of the accessibility of relatively inexpensive equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can make a movie, and a lot of people are making movies, but not not everybody should, and you should <laughs> receive some training mm -hmm. in how to actually construct a story and how to tell a story well in the film form. So we want to offer that kind of instruction. The other is just, you know, quite honestly, self-interest. We want to build our audience as people have new ways of experiencing film through their iPad or their mm -hmm. phone or their television set, increasingly people aren't going to the movies. They aren't going mm -hmm. to the theater. Uh, and younger people in particular are, I think, uh, harder and harder to get off of their couch's seat and uh, mm -hmm. into a movie theater. So by making um, this kind of material available to youngsters, we hope that as they become adults, they'll also come to the festival. Okay, now that's fantastic. Well, it's the St. Louis International Children's Film Festival. Again, it's taking place uh, this week. Some of the camps and workshops are going on, and then this weekend is the last weekend. Again, a lot of these events are free, and it's free films that you can go to at different locations, as you see on your screen around the St. Louis area. If you want to learn more information, you can call 314-289-4150. That's Cinema St. Louis's office, or you can visit their website at cinemastlouis.org. Well, it's cool. I might, I might take you up on the uh, return to Oz. Uh, yeah, well, it's been a while since I've seen that. And you don't have that. to be a kid in order to enjoy. <laughs> Honestly, adults have been attending these events, and 
and they are having just as good a time. That's fantastic. Well, maybe we'll see you this weekend. Good. And uh, next on STL TV Live, we'll meet two men on a mission to inspire children going through difficult times, 28 pages at a time. Stay tuned.